Okay, so we're going to move on into the whole idea of the dumb jock myth. Um, I probably, some of you thought it was maybe a strange title, but even though um, we're, quote, in modern times and we should be beyond this, um, this philosophy and this idea and concept and so forth is still alive and well, and hopefully we'll dispel some of these myths as we go through the presentation. First of all, some of the misconceptions. Dr. Paula Congleton, uh, our health, physical education, and softball coach in our department did her dissertation a couple of years ago, and part of that was really on some of the student athletes' perceptions of themselves and how they felt that their, their um, faculty felt about them. Now, this was not on our campus, so these were broad studies done across the country, but it's pretty interesting that 34% of the athletes viewed, were viewed negatively by professors, they thought. 60% were viewed negatively by their own classmates. Um, and then some of the derisive faculty comments, jokes and negative remarks made in class, 30% of the athletes had experienced that. Sort of a double jeopardy with students with learning disabilities because actually there's a fairly high number of student athletes that have learning disabilities. Sometimes they hide that as a, as a part of their sport. They go into sports, they go into activities to try to have some place to feel good about themselves. And those learning disabilities are, are not identified as quickly as they should be. I've got to tell you that our DSPS program on this campus has been wonderful for us. And they have really helped take care of our student athletes, which has really, I think, um, dispelled that myth on this campus. Uh, the impact on African American males has even been greater. So there's definitely a perception out there that, you know, athletes, people involved in physical education maybe aren't not quite as smart as the rest of us, and hopefully for the rest of everybody else, I guess I'm one of them. <laughs> Division I student athletes have higher SAT and ACT scores than college-bound students. The number of us receiving diplomas is at an all-time high. African-American males who are student athletes are 10% more likely to graduate. Still think we're just a bunch of dumb jocks? You need to do your homework. There are over 400,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. In the last few years, the NC2A really has taken this challenge to heart. Um, and they've done a lot of public service announcements like this one. Um, but the stats are now beginning to really prove our point. Uh, if you look at um, the graduation stats for NC2A athletes, 79% of them graduate in six years, as opposed to only 15% graduation rate for the, for the rest of the students. So we, we do have higher graduation rates. I'll show you a little bit of our local stats in a minute. But I think one of the things there in that first bullet, our student athletes, probably some of you don't know this, have a whole different set of academic standards. They must progress. They must pass units. They must have a certain GPA. They will not be able to compete without that. They have a time clock. They start, when they start as a full-time student, they have five years. They have a time clock within which to participate. So it's good. I mean, I think it does push them along. I guess that's why we call our program probably one of the hidden student success programs, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, okay, a couple of other things. This was very interesting, and I thought, you know, when Mark and I were looking at some of this stuff, I think he particularly was interested because at Indiana State University, uh, we have Dr. Barrett and Dr. Frederick who are in charge of the University Learning Outcomes Assessment. Now, this is a, a bigger program than the university, but when I saw Learning Outcomes, I thought, okay, this is us, because that's what we do and that's what we've been working on. 
Um, they measured seven growth domains. It's probably a little hard to read that. He'll be talking about that in the video. It's critical thinking, self-awareness, communication, diversity, citizenship, membership and leadership, and relationships. So you can see that in all but one case, student athletes are significantly higher. Like I said, they've tested over 200,000 students. And this video, there's a, one of them that doesn't sound great, so you'll have to listen carefully, but it's a, a very good vi video. We started the research on the UNILOA, the University Learning Outcomes Assessment. We're very interested in uh, how students are learning, where students are learning, what kind of experiences are helping them with learning. Critical thinking, self-awareness, uh, communication, diversity, uh, citizenship, membership and leadership, and relationships. So those are the seven domains we measure for growth. Their results found that student athletes learn and grow faster than other college students, much faster. So when we look at growth, it's literally twice the rate of non-athlete students. That's, that's something uh, just it's significant. I will admit I was the first resistant person. I checked and I looked at the data, I looked at the raw data. The results came from surveys of 200,000 college students nationwide. Of those students, the data of 1,200 student athletes were analyzed. Then they conducted another analysis report with triple the number of student athletes. Those are adequate enough numbers to be comfortable with, uh, with, with the findings. And our first report and the second report uh, were virtually the same in terms of our findings. The AA, when we shared the results, they said, we're overjoyed, but we can't let something like this out because it's too good. Because people are going to be suspect. I was one of the people that was not a big fan. I didn't quite understand why we had uh, athletics on campus. I looked at the data and I have been converted. This is one of the shining spots on campus. Student athletes do better, and even though we look down on them, and we'll probably do that for a little while until the data comes out. The study also found women learn at a faster rate than men, regardless of their activities. Certain categories seem to do even better in terms of learning. Woman uh, track and field athlete in a sorority. So it's like the trifecta. That's the trifecta. If I were a parent with uh, with uh, highly talented athletic children in, in in high school, I would encourage them to uh, to to go into college level sports because we know what that experience can do in terms of supporting them and making them better. Not a whole lot of people know the work we've done and the results. This is our our, our first uh, our first presentation to the broader community. Our hope is that higher education institutions across the country will, will stop shaking their finger and, uh, at, at intercollegiate athletics and, and, and falling for the, the, the urban legends of dumb jock and the like. Frederick and Barrett also hope their findings will encourage universities across the country to determine exactly why student athletes are learning so much faster than other college students. I want to challenge every academic affairs professional, every university president to say, look, your athletes are doing this. You need to get your data on your athletes. Then you need to figure out why other parts of the campus are not doing as well. The question now is, what is it that the athletics is doing? Okay, 